How's it going, YouTube? Anime Bar Lounge here, back with another deck list for GOAT format. Today we're playing a sort of water deck. I named it Lakunga Control, but it's definitely a work in progress. I'm not super satisfied with the deck, but it is something I would like to refine a little bit. So, uh, this deck was created because my favorite type in the game is plants. I like forcing plants in pretty much every format, but there's not a lot of good plants in GOAT, so the best thing I could find was this Lakunga, which is a plant, and it sort of has a water strategy. So I built this, what you see here today. I, the idea is to banish things with Lakunga, Aqua Spirit, and Fenrir, and then drop a Dimension Fusion, and hopefully drop some big things like Giga Gaga Giga, Daedalus, or Mobius. Uh, it also has things like Abyss Soldier to bounce our opponent's stuff back, and Tribe to nuke the board. So, um, backup strategy is just a sort of aggressive beatdown. We do have a Legendary Ocean, which allows us to just normal summon Giga Giga Giga, and we also have Reasoning, and if we get a monster off Reasoning, we can usually be aggressive by just uh, normal summoning a beat stick or tributing off the reasoning target for something like a Mobius. Uh, the deck functions pretty well when it gets the right hand, but I have noticed that its biggest issues is just not being able to make any plays because it either has too many high tribute monsters or Fenrir's with nothing to banish. I think what I might be considering is cutting a Fenrir and maybe maybe one Giga Gaga Gigo, or maybe even two Fenrirs, it's just because Lakunga basically f does the same thing that Fenrir's trying to do, and probably putting in another Metamorphosis and Scapegoat. The reason for this is that uh, Metamorphosis is really powerful because you can use a Scapegoat token or a Lakunga token under uh, Legendary Ocean or a Sinister Serpent, and you can bring out Thousand Eyes Restrict. And if you've played any amount of goat control, uh, goat format, you know that Thousand Eyes Restrict is a very powerful card. Um, I'm only running one trap in Mirror Force because it's a house, but basically what you see is what you get with this deck, and it does need some work, but I have been having some fun with it. So let's uh, bring today's deck uh, into some games, and then uh, we'll see how it performs, and I think another day you'll see... Uh, some edits. But yeah, without further ado, let's hop into some games. Alright, so while I was playing uh, these replays, I played them all against the same player. I met a cool player. I get—I don't know how this is pronounced. I'm going to do my best. I think it's Midu. Uh, if they see this video, they can correct me. But yeah, we swapped. Uh, I gave them my YouTube channel. They gave me their Twitch. So I'm going to link their Twitch in the description. All the games were played against them. Um, they're playing Archfiend, and I'm playing the Lakunga deck. So, I start off probably over committing here. Uh, I was hoping to go deep with this Monster Gate, but I went into Morphing Jar, which was really awkward. So I attributed off the Morphing Jar for the Giga Gaga Gigo. So I have at least a big beat beater. But that's really all, the only advantage I have going for me, and then I immediately lose that advantage, and we both take a hefty amount of damage. I try to get some tempo back with Tribe Infecting Virus, and I'm ahead uh, on life points for now, but I'm a little worried by um, whatever they can muster. But it seems like things are going fairly well for me. I can use Tribe and stay ahead. And assuming that this Lakunga goes through, I can get in for a lot of damage, but it gets bottomless. So I am still ahead on life points, but at this point I'm very worried because I have no cards in hand, and I end up top decking a reasoning, and I end up uh, hitting a Giga Gaga Gigo. They end up timing out here because uh, we end up getting in a. Uh, this is where our conversation began, where uh, they were confused why Fenrir didn't. Uh, get summoned, and then it's just because Fenrir can't be normal summoned and reasoning's weird, uh, in the sense that even though you can special summon uh, Fenrir, it, it, it is not a card that uh, you can hit off of reason. You can't special summoning it off of reasoning, and I believe 
uh, it has to be f Fenrir has to be properly special summoned first anyway, so it couldn't be like premature burial or something. But yeah, that was game one. Um, and then we played a second game. And uh, I'm just gonna swap the sides for consistency's sake. Uh, now I have an okay hand here, but this is what I was talking about, where there's nothing I can really summon. So if this reasoning didn't uh, work, uh, I was out of this game, and I had to play very aggressively. Like, you'll see I had to Dimension Fusion for just one monster, which never feels that great. And now they're able to Snatch Steal my big monster, and once again, you know, I'm pretty pretty open here. Thankfully I have Giant Trunade, which will bounce the snatch deal back to hand and I will get my monster back, but it's not going to end up mattering because it's just going to put it back in their hand, so it, it, all it's really doing is buying me time. Uh, I'm trying to get a little aggressive push here, but they end up getting the die roll on their Archfiend. I'm trying to set up defensively so that I can survive another turn, but they end up drawing two and then getting into Graceful Charity. They have all the setup they need. They take my Mobius, and then falling down, they take my Fenrir. A uh, bit of a misplay here. They forget to switch Fenrir into attack because it's only just half, but uh, a Lonely Abyss Soldier is not enough for me to take this game. So game two goes to them. Then we hop into game three, winner takes all, and I have a Mother Grizzly set. We both get our Pot of Greeds going, so Mother Grizzly dies, so I get out Sinister Serpent, because Sinister Serpent's a really good card to have access to, you can just keep getting it back every turn. Mobius for a lot of value to pop these two, but it ends up getting bottom list. And I set a scapegoat so I can play defensively on their following turn. They take out the pink, because according to them, pink is the worst one. I think blue is the best scapegoat. Which scapegoat do you think is the best? Leave it in the comments below. Alright, I get my tribe infecting virus. I get to discard Sinister Serpent for free. Right now, with all these powerful cards, we are way ahead in both uh, tempo and damage. We get to get in for a lot. Uh, we might, we're in a position to close out the game on the following turn. Uh, I didn't even realize they had uh, that, that BLS could be a huge problem for us. That's a huge comeback card, and the Cyber Jar wipes our entire field. So, with Cyberjar, we both have enormous hands. I use Metamorphosis to go into Thousand Eyes and eat their monster. They don't have a field, but we already did our battle phase, so now it passes to them, and they are completely free to drop whatever they want to do. So, on our following turn... We just have to find a way to do 2600 damage to them, so I bounce all their spells and traps back. I normal summon this since it's a 4 star, get back our 1 from the graveyard, and it's enough to clean up the game. And this whole time, I did not realize, obviously, uh, until now watching the replay, that they had a BLS and a Dark Necrofear. This was definitely a close game. Uh, if we couldn't win this turn, uh, they. With the fact that they have this Desrook Archfiend, if they just found a way to get this engraved, they would have definitely had enough, uh, a way to summon this and this, and then they could have premature burial back. And, you know, they also have cards like Falling Down to take our stuff. So, um, yeah, that was definitely a close game. Uh, I had a lot of fun. This was definitely cool meeting someone that was friendly. A lot of people I meet on here don't really talk, or they can be kind of toxic, so meeting someone that was actually nice to chat with was a nice change of pace, and I've been having a lot of fun getting back into GOAT. Anyway, thanks for checking out the video. Oh, and before I forget, uh, I did give this person my YouTube, and they gave me their Twitch, uh, but the client booted me out before I could finish my conversation, so yeah, if you're watching this, I did follow your Twitch, and I'm gonna link it uh, in the description below, so that anyone watching this can also go follow it. Anyway, thanks for checking out Anime Boy Lounge. Take it easy.